everybody's being smart. Most importantly, I hope everybody is on code, staying on code, trying to get on code, trying to understand what a code is. The code simply means that there is a code of conduct that we in the black community are dedicated and committed to. And that code of conduct says that you don't do or say anything, especially publicly, that can be detrimental or harmful to the black collective. You don't put your own personal, individual uh, uh, prosperity or, or plan or whatever above the collective and the community to the point where you go out and you publicly say and do things that will be detrimental to the black collective as a whole in the United States. That's what the code is. It's a code of conduct. Okay? And um, and more than ever, we've got to get on code because there's a whole lot going on. And I'm here today so that we can talk about something that is specifically going on, that's specifically um, and directly targets and affects black Americans, especially foundational black Americans. Okay? So we need to know this. Uh, I put it on Twitter that this needs to go to the Summer Jam screen. So I'm doing my part to make sure that it comes to the Summer Jam screen, okay? Now, like I said, every, like always, everything that I read from, every article that I read from, whatever, all of that stuff will be listed down in the description box so that you can follow along with me during the video or, so, or after the video, you can take your time and you can go and you can read this information for yourself so you'll be up to date on what's going on and how this government has been working against us and trying to undermine us for the longest time, especially in the area of immigration. Because this is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about immigration, okay? And I've not done a whole lot on immigration, but um, I've listened to the thought leaders in our community, Tariq, uh, Professor Black Truth, um, Jason Black, um, Dr. Boyce Watkins, uh, definitely uh, uh, Dr. Claude Anderson, because he talked about how Im in immigration was impacting us years and years ago. He's been talking about it for years. So, um, and, and we've got to get more serious about understanding how this whole immigration thing and how all of these immigrants and, and including the illegals are being used against us to undermine uh, black Americans and especially native black Americans, foundational black Americans. So let's get into this. I, uh, I appreciate everybody being here. Um, as you come in, please subscribe, hit that bell notification so you can be notified when we upload videos. And again, remember y'all, I do this I, I do this because I love it, because I love y'all, and because we all need to know what's going on around us. And we all need to do our part. And this is just me trying to do one little bit of my part, okay? So let's get into this. Now, the first thing we're going to go to is there's a whole lot of talk about this uh, new deal for new Americans, right? With Grace Ming, Representative Grace Ming, I think she's from New York, Democrat. Um, the other dude is um, Markey, Senator Edward Markey. He's a Democrat from Massachusetts. So him and Grace Ming have gotten together and um, they are re reintroducing something. Well, what they're introducing is this New Americans Act, right? And that's the reason why they're calling it the New Deal. The reason why they're calling it the New Deal is because it's not brand new. It's not something that's brand new. It's being reintroduced. Um, and it's something that actually first came about during the uh, Obama administration. Remember, we've already, it's already been established, we've already proven that Obama did absolutely nothing for black folks, especially not foundational black Americans here in the United States. But he did a whole lot for other groups. The alphabet group, uh, uh, for illegals, for immigrants, uh, uh, um, for, uh, for, the, for, 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 for the police, 
with all of that uh, uh, blue, blue alert bills and all this kind of stuff that he had going on. So he did a whole lot for other groups, specifically Native Americans. Specifically, he did things for these other groups. And he did not do anything for us. You know, they'll throw out this Obamacare. That's all they talk about. When you talk about Obama didn't do anything for black folks, they, the first thing they want to throw out is this Obamacare. Okay, well, Obamacare was for everybody. And I've heard a lot of people, black and white, say that Obamacare was not the godsend that they tried to make it out to be. That it, that it actually turned out to be an absolute mess. But that's the one thing that they'll throw out there is Obamacare. Or, uh, uh, um, and, 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 and the decisions that, uh, that Obama made were the reason why more black people lost their homes and more, uh, and more black people um, lost their wealth doing Obama's administration than at any other time in history. Except for, of course, when, 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 when the, the white supremacists and the racists and the, and the KKK were stealing everything, okay? So this whole thing about this new Americans that you're going to see a whole lot of now talking about this new deal for new Americans act, well, that whole thing started under Obama, just like DACA and Dreamers and all of that started under Obama, okay? So let me read to you. Now, this is um, an archive piece of information from Obama's White House. When Obama was um, president, it's, it's one of those White House briefings, and it comes from ObamaWhiteHouse.archives.gov. And yes, the, uh, the link will be in the description box. So since we're going to talk about this, let's get to the root and where this whole thing originated from, right? It says White House Task Force on New Americans. We can make every American feel welcome and make our community stronger in the process. Now, remember, this is coming from the Obama White House. Welcoming immigrants and refugees from around the world. The basic idea of welcome, welcoming immigrants to our shores is central to our way of life. It is in our DNA. Now, this is, this, this is a quote from Obama. It is in our DNA. We believe our diversity, our differences, when joined together by a common set of ideals, makes us stronger, makes us more creative, makes us different. From all these different strands, we make something new here in America. President Barack Obama, July 4th, 2014. And you have to remember, Obama was, was an immigrant. Father from Kenya, mother was a, a, a white woman from, uh, I think, Hawaii or whatever. Um, so Obama was, uh, was an immigrant. You understand what I'm saying? He was certainly not a foundational black American. Okay? Now just listen. Our proud tradition of continually welcoming immigrants and refugees from around the world is part of what makes America exceptional. We're bound together by the power of a simple, a simple idea that everyone willing to work hard and play by the rules and play by the rules, everyone that is willing to work hard and play by the rules is welcome. But we already know that these immigrants, especially the immigrants that have come to the United States shores, none of them have worked that hard. You understand what I'm saying? They all had a leg up. They all had uh, 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 some, 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 some welfare and some programs and some resources thrown their way so that they could succeed. None of them came here. Now, they might have come here with nothing, but when they got here, there were certain things done for them, certain resources given to them. We got the Homestead Act. We got all the, the programs and all of this stuff for, for, for the immigrants coming through Ellis Island. When they started coming in, the Italians, the Irish, and all of that, and they started forming all of those gangs. Because remember, the gangs of New York were, were eventually all white folk. The Irish, the Italians, all of them. 
So they started coming up with different plans and all of that. That's the reason why the Irish took over uh, uh, the uh, 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 the labor unions and the Italians and all they took off. Well, the Italians took over the, 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 the underground. And, and the, the Irish took over the police and the, uh, and, and the labor unions and all of this. So they had certain things put in place for them. Again, the Homestead Act, when all the immigrants came in after, um, after, um, y'all, the Reconstruction era, after Reconstruction was over, and all, and, and, and America started calling in all the immigrants from Europe and giving them land for free and teaching them how to work the land. Martin Luther King uh, uh, Jr. did that speech about uh, when he said in, in this campaign we coming for our check he talks about how they brought the immigrants in they gave them the land they, they gave them the the, uh, the the money and the machinery to work the land taught them how to work the land and all of that but he did but he says if you if they willing to work hard and play by the rules all right let's keep going on November 21st 20, 20, 2014. The president established the White House Task Force on New Americans. So just like a whole lot of this other stuff that we see happening now with the Dreamers and DACA and all of this stuff, Obama did all of this. Obama started all of this. Why? Because Obama was an immigrant himself. And we always run around talking about the first black president. No, he was the first biracial president. He was the first non-FBA uh, uh, president. But he, uh, but he was not the first black president. We have yet to see a truly black president. A foundational black American. On November 21st, 2014, the president established the White House Task Force on New Americans a government-wide effort tasked with better integrating immigrants and refugees into American communities. Want to get more detail about the task force recommendations? Read the strategic action plan here. And it's, it's got a link that you can um, that you can click. And then we'll click on it in a minute. In 2015, the task force has been busy implementing recommend, recommended actions and highlighting local models of success. Here's what has been accomplished so far. Spearheaded the Building Welcoming Committee Committee's campaign to encourage local efforts within with 47 communities signed to on today. Launched the Strong Stand Stronger Citizenship Awareness Campaign to reach the 8.8 .8 million lawful permanent residents eligible to apply for citizenship. Named Presidential Ambassadors for Citizen and Neutralization to harness the stories of prominent new Americans and U.S. born individuals with immigrant, with immigrant roots to promote naturalization, bolster integration in initiatives, and increase awareness of the rich contributions of new Americans. Committed 150 welcoming community, commit communities, AmeriCorp members to nearly 100 communities. Launched the Made It in America initiative to promote entrepreneurship and held more than 80 SBA, uh, uh, the Small Business Association, one-on-one -on -one classes for immigrants and refugee entrepreneurs. Now, when have they ever done all of this for Foundation of Black Americans? When have they ever done all of this for us? Gave us classes. You understand what I'm saying? The Small Business Association come in giving classes and all that on how to be an entrepreneur, how to set up a business. When has any of that ever been done specifically for us as a group? But it was done specifically for immigrants, right? Supported five communities seeking to strengthen integration and local networks through adult education providers. Want to get more details about the task force's accomplishments and initiatives for the coming year? Read the one-year progress report. Building welcoming committees, community, uh, building welcoming com communities campaign. The president is calling on local communities to join the building welcoming 
Communities campaign and act on a set of principles to build inclusive, welcoming communities that allow all residents to thrive and advance integration efforts in three core areas, civic, economic, and linguistic inter integration. Building welcoming communities is not only the right thing to do, it is also vital to our economic future. Immigrants start 28% of new businesses, just listen, and immigrants or the children of immigrants have funded more than 40% of Fortune 500 companies, which collectively employ more than 10 million people worldwide. And over the next 20 years, now how you gonna come here, you claim you come here poor, you claim you come here with nothing, Okay, if you come here poor and you come here with nothing, then how can you start 28% of the new businesses? How can you be the founder of more than 40% of Fortune 500 companies if you come here with nothing? If you come here with nothing, Okay, then, but 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 you got capital to start a new business. You got capital to fund something that becomes a Fortune 500 company. Okay, if you came here, but where'd you get that money from? Where'd you get that capital? Where did you get that kind of investment to be able to start brand new businesses and to be able to, to start, you understand what I'm saying, 40% over, it says more than 40% of Fortune 500 companies. If you come here broke, and once you get here, nobody helps you. Nobody does anything for you. How in the world are you able to do that? And over the next 20 years, immigrants and their children would account for 85% of the net growth in our labor force. And then it has a video down here uh, uh, that goes with it, participating cities and counties. Um, according to the most recent estimates, there are approximately 13.3 million lawful permanent residents living in the United States, and 8.8 .8 million of them are eligible for, to apply for citizenship. This includes over 3 million refugees who have resettled here since 1975 from countries that span the globe. Nearly one out of every three eligible individuals obtained LPR status in 1990 or earlier, meaning that many have been part of our community for decades, but they don't yet enjoy all the rights, benefits, and responsibilities that come with being full American citizens. So um, I'll link this. Of course, this will be linked in the, in the description box, and you can go and, 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 and read that um. Read the strategic action plan. Let me click on that and see what it says. Um, yeah, it's a PDF. It's 170 pages. The task force on new Americans. Cecilia Munez was the uh, co-chair, director of the White House uh, Domestic Policy Council. Uh, Leon Rodriguez was the co-chair, director of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. Uh, the Corporation of National and Community Service, the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Commerce, the Department of Education, the Department of Health and Resources, all of that was a part of it. Dear Mr. President, it is our privilege to submit to you the Task Force on New America's Strategic Action Plan on Immigrant and Refugee Im Integration. As the daughter of immigrants and the son and grandson of individuals who came to the United States as Refugees, respectfully, it is a distinct honor to lead this initiative on your behalf and on behalf of the more than 40 million immigrants um, and refugees living in the United States. Uh, this letter was from uh, 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 Cecilia Munez and, and Leon and, and, and Leon Rajigas. So you can click on that link that'll be in the um, in the link that's that's in this article. And you can read more about this. But understand that this whole thing on new Americans started with Obama, right? Started with Obama. Evidently, it didn't pick up any speed. It didn't go anywhere or whatever. And so now they have decided that they're going to reintroduce it and they're going to take it uh, even further. So now it won't be a White House task force. 
Now it'll be something else, right? So now I'm going over here to S433. That's the um that's the bill name. S433, S.433, New Deal for New Americans Act of 2021. So, see, this is something they done in 2021. This is something that they introduced and they started in 2021. Senator Mackey, Senator Edward J. Mackey of Massachusetts introduced this originally on 2-24-2021. That's when it was originally introduced. Committees, the Judiciary Committee of the Senate, of the Senate, right? Um, now let's get to the text, because I'm not gonna read this whole thing, because this whole thing is like eighty some pages. This this act is like eighty some pages, but it's a Senate re resolution, Senate Resolution four three three, right? And of course, it'll be linked in the description box. And uh, this is what it says. This is the text, and this is what it says to establish the National Office of New Americans to reduce obstacles to United States citizenship, to support the integration of immigrants into the social, cultural, economic, and civic life of the United States and for other purposes. Now, let me just read to you what some of these sections are. Uh, Title I, New Americans and Integration. Title II, Programs to Promote Citizenship, Integration, and Prosperity. Title III, Reducing Barriers to Citizenship. Let's see what some of these say. Section 301, Sense of Congress, Immigration Service Fees, Waiver of English Requirement for Senior New Americans, Reduce Financial Obstacles to new, uh, Neutralization, Neutralization for Certain United States High School Graduates, Family integration, revision of grounds for deportation. See, they want to revise uh, 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 the grounds for deportation. They even want to take out, because one of the grounds for deportation is for you to commit a certain level of crime. Right? They want to take that out. Let's go there. Let's go there for a minute. Uh, this is Section 307 of this... Um, New Deal for New Americans Act. It says, Revision of Grounds for Deportation. Section 237A of the Immigration Neutralization Act is amended by striking paragraph 5. So let's go over here and see. And it's got the, uh, the, the, the code listed. So let's go over here and see what paragraph 5 says. trying to find paragraph five. I'm trying to see if I can find paragraph paragraph five. Five, public charge. Any alien who, within five years after the date of entry, has become a public charge from causes not affirmatively shown to have arisen since entry is deportable. So this section right here gives all the reasons why an illegal alien, and that's what, and that is the, that is the, uh, 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 um, legal name, alien. So when we say an illegal alien, you're not saying anything wrong. You understand what I'm saying? They want you to say stuff undocumented and all that. No, the law calls them aliens, okay? That's what the law calls them. Any alien, including an alien crewman, in or in and admitted to the United States, shall upon the order of the Attorney General be removed if the alien is within one or more of the following classes of deportable aliens. Inadmissible at time of entry, or, or or of adjustment to status or violate status. Inadmissible aliens, any alien who at the time of entry or adjustment of status was within one or more of the classes of aliens, inadmissible by the law existing at such time is deportable. So this gives the whole section of why you would be deported. 
And they're saying paragraph five of this section right here should be stricken. Right? That's what it's saying. That's all it's saying about this is that paradise is uh, uh is, is that paradise paragraph uh five of this section eight you of eight section eight of the US code 122A. Okay, let's see. 122A. Let's go here. I'm not exactly sure which paragraph they're talking about. They just say paragraph 5 of A. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This, uh, again, it says public, it says public charge. Any alien who, within five years after the date of entry, has become a public charge from causes not affirmatively shown to have arisen since entry is deportable. I, I don't, but they're saying the paragraph is paradise, uh, pa Lord, I don't know why I keep thinking about paradise. The paragraph five should be stricken from, from being a ground for deportation. Okay. Um, what else is on here? Neutralization uh, ceremonies, proud to be a United States citizen program uh automatic registration of eligible uh, um individuals voter protection and security and automatic registration uh what else uh, uh title four refu excuse me refugee resettlement and integration title five protections for immigrants personally identifiable information Voluntary voluntary participation in integration and inclusive activities. I mean, this thing is long. So what we're gonna do is, for the uh, for the for for the the sake of time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna read the summary, right? And maybe at another date, I'll go I'll go more in depth into this. But it'll be linked in the description box, and I would urge you to just take the time, take out a minute to read some of it. Or to read the whole thing and see what it has to say, but uh, so but we're gonna just read the summary. And when you bring it up, when you when you bring up the link, uh, it shows you right down under that 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 um the box. It shows you the summary, the text, the actions, the titles, the amendments, the co-sponsors, the committees, and the related bills. Okay, let's see what related bills. What bills are related to this? Uh, National Office of New American Acts. Uh, that's HR 572. That's House Resolution 572. That's what it was in the House. Um, that was introduced 322-21, referred to Subcommittee on Immigration and uh, Citizenship. Then there was House Resolution 1308, New Deal for New Americans, Act of 221, Identical Bill 428. 2021, and then Senate Resolution 291, Natural, National Office of New Americans Act related bill. Uh, that was 0208 2021. All right, so let's go over here to the summary, and I'm just going to give you a little summary of it. Um, this bill provides assistance to immigrants and addresses issues related to naturalization. The bill establishes the National Office of New Americans to one, welcome and support immigrants, two, promote and support immigration, in, in, immigrant integration, and three, promote the pursuit of U.S. citizenship among immigrants. The bill also establishes grant programs. So now we're getting into the money. Grant programs for eligible entities that provide one, legal services for immigrants, 
English language to English English language education that focus uh, focuses on integrating students into society, and three work first develop workforce development training that supports the economic integration of immigrants. The bill also reauthorizes the citizen the citizenship and integration grant program within U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, U.S. CIS. So they're talking about money. So you have to understand, anytime any other group or, 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 or goes before Congress or goes before the House or goes to the President or anything, they asking for money. They asking for tangible resources, not symbolism. We don't want no holidays. We don't want no first or uh, first immigrant jobs. We don't want none of that. We want tangibles. We want resources. We want money. Right? And instead of just listing how much money they want, they're going to try to break it down into grants. And you have to put your application in through this National Office of New Americans because that's where everything is going to happen in that office. That's where the funds will be. And then you put your application for this grant money into the National Office of New Americans. Right? USCIS shall establish a nonprofit entity to spur innovation in the expansion of citizenship pro, uh, uh, preparation programs and to support assistance for immigrants seeking permanent resident status or citizenship. So not only are you going to have the National Office of New Americans, you understand what I'm saying, but you're going to have this nonprofit. Like a foundation, you're gonna have this nonprofit that can get money that that can get money from um, private from the private sector, from corporations and businesses and all this kind of stuff, and that money will be going directly to uh, 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 all of these services for these these immigrants and, and so-called refugees. The bill also requires the how the Department of Homeland Security to one report to Congress before increasing fees for immigration adjudication and natural naturalization services above the levels of such fees as as such fees on January first, two night twenty nineteen, and two waive or reduce certain immigration related fees for low income aliens. So you're already coming in here illegally. You're already working illegally. You're already getting all kinds of health, free he free health care. Uh, 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 uh. You can drive without a driver's license. You can get a driver's license without being a citizen. They push it for you to be able to vote without being a citizen and all of this. But they worry about your money. They want to make sure that, you know, the fees for certain things that you have to pay for Congress has to know before those fees are increased and that certain fees should be waived or reduced for these low-income aliens. And yeah, that's what they call them in this bill, low-income aliens. So when these people run around here telling you that you can't call them illegal aliens and that that's not and that's not politically correct or or whatever the case may be, because a few years ago, a couple of years back in New York, if you call somebody an illegal alien, you could get fined and all of this kind of stuff by the city. But legally, that's what they're called. This is a bill that's introduced before Congress and they're being called aliens. And the last thing is the bill also, one, waives the English proficiency requirement for the naturalization of certain permanent residents. Now tell me what country any American can migrate to and that country's government, that country's politicians go through all of this 
to make that American national welcome. Down to changing laws and adding laws and giving you all kind of protected status and all of that. Tell me what country we can go to, especially uh, black Americans, especially foundational, foundational black Americans. Tell me what foreign country we can go to and we can migrate, immigrate to that country and get treated like this. Your whole laws are created to protect us and to provide for us and to look out for us. The bill also one waives the English proficiency requirement for the naturalization of certain permanent residents. Two, repeals the public charge ground for the reduction. So yeah, that's that that was the one. The public group repeals the public charge ground for deportation. Requires states to provide for automatic voter registration to qualify new citizens unless that individual declines. And four, sets a floor of, now listen to this, because this is important. Listen to this. Sets a floor of 125,000 to the maximum number of refugees who may be admitted into the United States in one year. So they're going to set the number of refugees that can come into the United States in one year and the floor, the least amount is 125,000 a year. That's the least amount. So that's just a summary. Right? And I've heard other people say that this National Office of New Americans is actually comparable to the Freedmen's Bureau. What they set up for, well, what, uh, 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 what they say they were setting up for the newly freed, newly emancipated uh, 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 um, ex-slaves. The Freedmen's Bureau. So this is the uh, immigrant equivalent to the Freedmen's Bureau. But not only will they have this office in the White House, you understand what I'm saying? But they'll also have this nonprofit on the side that's receiving donations from the private sector. So not only will they have money coming from the government, from the United States government, in the form of these grants, you understand what I'm saying? But they'll also have a nonprofit set up with money coming in from corporations and the private sector, you understand what I'm saying? And that money will be funneled into this uh, uh, National Office of New Americans, so they'll just have money coming from everywhere. Now, I got this from Congresswoman Grace Ming. You know, she's the one that started all of this. She's the reason behind uh, the executive order that, well, the, the executive, the, the memorandum or whatever that Biden did within his first uh, 100 days when he became, when he came into office, that, that, uh, that memorandum on the, uh, the, uh, the AA, the, the AA8, the, 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 the uh, Asian Americans and, and, and Pacific Islanders memorandum, she's responsible for that. She's responsible for uh, 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 the money that came in through the, um, the, the hate crime, the, 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 the COVID-19 hate crimes bill. She's responsible for that. You know, it was $50 million included in that to be passed out to, uh, to these different uh, uh, Asian American, Pacific Islander uh, community groups and all of that. It was $50 million uh, added, uh, uh, in, in involved in that. So they didn't just get this, 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 this protected status. They also got $50 million. All of that was a part of that, that COVID, that big COVID act thing he did um, in, in 2020, right? Well, 2020, 2021. But anyway, this is what Congress, uh, Congresswoman Grace Ming 
And yes, she's an immigrant. You understand what I'm saying? She might not be Hispanic or whatever, but she might not be coming. She might have didn't come across the uh, the southern border, but she's an immigrant. You understand? Uh, this is what she had to say on her website. Congresswoman, uh, Congresswoman Great, Congresswoman Ming, and Senator Markey reintroduced the New Deal for New Americans Act to welcome immigrants and refugees. March 2020, March 22. Uh, 2023 press release Washington DC US rep Grace Ming like I said New York Democrat and Senator Edward Mackey uh, Massachusetts Democrat today announced the reintroduction of the New Deal for New Americans Act a bill to promote the inclusion of new immigrants and refugees in the United States the legislation would establish new programs to assist immigrants and refugees overcoming Common challenges such as language barriers, obtaining employment, and helping to break down obstacles to neutralization. The measure would also strengthen coordination between federal, state, and local governments to support the social, economic, and civic integration um, of immigrants and refugees. The United States is a great nation because of its rich and diverse uh, immigrant communities. So again, Always with this, trying to act like the United States is what the United States is because of immigrants. No, the United States is what the United States is because of the foundation of black Americans who built it, who laid the foundation for it. When these immigrants came, there was already a country established, wealth established, banks established, corporations established. All of that was already established when, when 90% of the immigrants got here. So they didn't build anything. And they have not really contributed to anything when you think about how much money, how many billions of dollars every year the United States pays out taking care of these immigrants and these illegals and these aliens that come in from everywhere. Um, when we invest in helping new Americans thrive and integrate into our country, we are investing in our future generations, said Congresswoman Ming. We must fight to protect the principles our nation was founded on and ensure we must fight to protect the principles our nation was founded on. How do you know anything about the principles this nation was founded on and you just got here not too long ago? You need to be concerned about the, 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 the principles your nation was founded on because the principles that this nation was founded on was uh, pr the principles of white supremacy racism so if we're going to protect the principles that this nation was founded on we protected the principles the ideology of white supremacy racism See, this is for all you black folks still running around here believing we got friends and we got allies. You understand what I'm saying? We have some kind of minority coalition, coalitions. You understand what I'm saying? And this people of color bullshit and people of color need to stick together and all of this. No, these immigrants are sticking together. And now they're making it clear we intend to replace you. Even down to, we're going to take over what they started for you with the Freedmen's Bureau. We're going to take that over, just change the name of it, and call it the, uh, the, um, the National Office of New Americans. Right, because that's what we were. After, the, after the, the Emancipation Proclamation had freed this four, uh, four plus million uh, 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 previously enslaved people, we now became new Americans. And the Freedmen's Bureau was set up to, to provide us with the help and all of that that we needed to get started in the society as new citizens. No longer three-fifths of a person. You understand what I'm saying? No longer property, no longer chattel property, but now new citizens, new Americans. So all they did was change the name.
We must fight to protect the principles our nation was founded on and ensure our immigration system is an inclusive and a welcoming, welcoming safe haven for all who come here. I am proud to once again champion the New Deal for, Ameri for Americans Act on behalf of the countless people who wish to join and co co contribute and succeed in the U.S. as new Americans. Immigrants and refugees deserve the opportunity to fully thrive in the United States, not just survive. Not just survive. Look to me like they're thriving just fine. They ain't got to have no insurance. You ain't got to work in, in, in certain places, California and other places, when, if, they get, if they get stopped or whatever, they ain't got to worry about their car getting towed. They getting all this free health care, all this free education. They up there in New York living in five-star hotels. Immigrants and rep, uh, 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 j not just survive, says Senator Mac Markey. And I mean, you don't understand. He's, sen he's a senator coming from Massachusetts, one of the most racist states in America. Boston is one of the most racist cities in America. One of the most anti-black cities and states in America. But he ain't introduced nothing for the black Americans, foundational black Americans in Massachusetts. I am proud to, to reintroduce this visionary roadmap for an in, 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 immigration system that isn't only in, centered on enforcement and penalties, but instead prioritizes support for refugees and migrants as they navigate their, their new homeland and participate in the social, economic, and civic life of their communities. Specifically, the New Deal for New Americans Act would establish, um, and it's got some points here, and it might have a few more points than, than the summary did. Um, establish a national office of new Americans, which of course is the re, is, is just renaming, rebranding the Freedmen's Bureau. In the executive office of the White House to promote and support immigrant and, and refugee integration and inclusion and coordinate efforts of federal, state, and local governments to support social, economic, and civic integration of immigrants and refugees. Establish a federal initiative on new Americans. You understand what I'm saying? See, these folks go straight to the federal government. They don't mess around. Yeah, they might include state and local, but they go straight to. They talking about this office not being in, in, in some state government somewhere, or they're not saying that every state needs to set up a national office of America, or, or, I mean, an office of America, a new Americans. No, they saying we want a national office, and we want it in the executive office of the White House. We want federal initiative on um, new Americans. We running around here in the reparations movement, running around here from state to state and city to city uh, uh, with all of these little reparations things popping up everywhere and all of that. The folks can't get the language right. The folks can't get no understanding. They can't get codified on it or nothing. We running around and this is what they doing. They taking it straight to the power source. They taking it straight to the power source. Why? Because they know that the federal government has the power to offer the states whatever the states need to get in line with whatever the federal government is doing. Just like the 1994 crime bill. Everybody kept talking about, oh, well, that was federal. That was federal. The states did what they wanted to do. Uh, 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 it didn't have nothing to do with the state level. Yes, it did, because the state offered all of that money. The federal government offered all of that money to the states to get the states to, 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 to draw their, uh, uh, to, 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 to make their laws line up with what the federal government was doing. So the federal government knows how to incentivize the states to get the states to go along with what the federal government is doing. That's the reason why these other groups go directly to the power source. 
That's the reason why when, when Ice Cube did his contract for Black America, he went straight to the power source. He didn't fool with these little individual states. He went straight to the power source. Trump talked to him. But Trump's, Trump's group, Trump's camp talked to him. Biden's camp wouldn't. You go to the people in power. All this little state stuff we got going on, and, and folks can't, like I said, we can't get codified. They can't get the language right. They can't even decide what we what what that what we supposed to be called. And while we're doing all of this, bumping into each other and running into each other with all of this state and city mess, these folks are going straight to the federal government. They're going straight to the power source. Bullet point number two, establish a federal initiative on new Americans to coordinate a federal response to address issues that affect the lives of new immigrants and refugees, as well as communities with growing immigrant and, refu and refugee pop um, populations. Create a legal services and immigration assistant grant program. So now you're going to get grants. So to, 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 so to pay for their legal services. Told you they got grants. With they, with these folks talk about money. Create a legal services and immigration assistance grant program to support organizations that provide direct immigration assistance, assistance to those in need of immigration screening, Know your rights education, assistance in applying for citizenship, lawful permanent residence status, or other legal status, DACA, TPS, asylum, etc., or seeking relief from a removal order. Create an English as a gateway to integration program for organizations that teach English or help individuals prepare for neutralization or earn a GED. Create a workforce development grant program. You understand what I'm saying? So all of these folks out here that running these businesses and all that can get these grants if they say they're working to help these immigrants integrate into the workforce. Create a workforce development grant program to ensure that immigrant and refugee adults have equitable access to education and workforce programs that help equip them with occupational skills needed to secure or advance in employment. So see, the private sector can run in and get these grants. Or these folks that, 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 that run these construction companies or have these contracts with the government or whatever, they can run in and get this grant money because all they have to do is say they're setting up a program to help immigrants or refugees learn occupational skills or learn this kind of skill or whatever. Uh, increase authorization of appropriations for the U.S. Citizen and, and, and Citizenship and Immigration Service, USCIS, um, Citizenship and Integration uh, Grant Program to $100 million. Told you, these folks go after money. These folks are not interested in symbolism. These folks are not interested in holidays. These folks are not interested in you naming the first black woman to do this or the first black to do that. And I, they're not interested in that. These folks are interested in tangible resources. And they go straight to the head to get it. Reduce barriers for individuals to, neutral, to neutralize by establishing a flat application fee for neutralization, amending the English and civics exam requirements for older individuals, and exempting eligible U.S. high school graduates from taking the neutralization exams. So if they graduated from, the United, from, from, from high school in the United States, Don't make them take a, um, a neutralization exam. But let's go 
going back to that because I want y'all to hear that again. Increase authorization of appropriations. Anytime you hear the word appropriations, when you're dealing with anything with the government, that's money. That's money. Increase authorization of appropriations for the U.S. Citizens and Immigration Service Citizenship and Integration Grant Program to $100 million. Increase it to $100 million. Limit USCIS's ability to raise fees without Congress without Congress's approval. Plus, require authorization of appropriations to cover USCS need to operate and adjudicate cases. So they go to word appropriate again. So they talking about more money. Promote civic engagement through automatic voter registration of newly neutralized individuals. So you just automatically get registered to vote. You don't have to go through the process that everybody else has to go through of registering to vote. Vote. You just get automatically registered to vote. When I turned 18, they started sending me all kind of flyers and everything from the Democratic Party and, and the Republicans and all this. And you got to go down and you got to provide this information and that information to get registered to vote. No, these folks are supposed to automatically be registered to vote if they are newly neutralized individuals. Just automatic. You ain't gotta you ain't gotta go through nothing. You ain't gotta provide no ID. You ain't gotta do nothing. We just gonna automatically register you to vote. See that John Lewis vote neck mess uh, uh didn't work. It didn't work like they thought it was gonna work. Cause you couldn't get enough black people behind it to get it pushed. You understand what I'm saying? Because we realized that it was a trick bag. Black folks can vote. You understand what I'm saying? And black folks are not so poor. You understand what I'm saying? And so stupid that we can't go get an ID if we want to go vote. So we saw that for the bullshit that it was. And we didn't get behind that like we thought we would. Like they thought we would. But they had another. They, they, they had something else in the works. They had something else in the work, works. You know, they're trying to get it. All of these different cities and all of this to to uh to, to approve let these illegals vote in local elections. And a lot of that stuff is being struck down by different courts and all of that. But they, they got it in the mix. They got it in the mix. Listen, expand family integration by reducing the age of citizens who are able to petition eligible family members from 21 years old to 18 years old. Right. So that's for them anchor babies. That's for them anchor babies. That's the reason why they come here and have all of them babies when they get here. Those are anchor babies. Those babies are meant to anchor them to this country. Now, once that anchor baby is 21 years old, you understand what I'm saying? That anchor baby, um, can can start the process of trying to help get those family members uh, brought in. You understand what I'm saying? As citizens and all of that. So they want to reduce that from 21 to 18. Listen to this. And since so many of them lie and say that they're refugees, you understand what I'm saying? They're leaving the country because they're asylum seekers and all of this. Listen to what they say. Increase refugee admissions level to 125,000 per fiscal year. Now, remember we read on the summary that the floor was 125,000, meaning no less than 125,000 per fiscal year. Provide social, economic, and civic support to refugees and rebuild the capacity and infrastructure of local communities to welcome refugees. Amend the Immigration and, National, National, and Nationality Act to no longer adapt, allow deportation of individuals of an individual deemed to have become a public charge. Let's see what that means to become a public charge.
what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? This guidance, this guidance defined a public charge as someone who is primarily dependent on the government for subsistence as demonstrated by either the receipt of public cash assistance for income maintenance or institutionalization for long-term care at government expense. What is the meaning of public charge? Public charge is defined as a non-citizen who is likely to become primarily dependent on the government for support by receiving either cash assistance for income maintenance, uh, being institutionalized for long-term care at the government's expense. So what they're saying is, uh, 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 you didn't been here, you didn't been here for over five years as a as an illegal alien. You didn't been here for over five years. That whole time you were on public assistance, or 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 you were institutionalized somewhere at the government's expense. So basically, your whole existence. Is supported by the government. What they're saying is, don't let those people be considered for deport for, for deportation. Strike that. Strike that from the deportation laws. So you can be over here and stay on public assistance as long as you want to. And you never, and you never, put, but, but, but these are the hardworking people that come here and do so much. These are the hardworking people that come here and add so much uh, 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 to the economy, to the culture, uh, uh, to the society. But yet, you don't want the ones that ain't doing nothing, ain't adding nothing, ain't contributing nothing, and they depending on the government for their very existence here. You don't want them eligible for deportation. So those are the bullet points. Uh, then they go on to say, I want to thank Congresswoman Ming and Senator Mackey for their leadership on this transformative legislation for immigration uh, inclusion, said Nicole Malaku, Executive Director of the National Partnership for New Americans. And, and they have a website. We're going to get into that too. Our diversity is our strength, and this bill will transform how the federal government's treat how the federal government, how the federal government, how the federal government, not state and local governments, but how the federal government treats immigrant communities by investing in them instead of attacking them. We urge lawmakers to support this critical piece of legislation, which will help immigrants overcome common challenges such as language barriers, lack of legal services, and the price of immigration application fees, and build a lasting national welcoming infrastructure. And then it has a list down here of the people who have endorsed it and all of that, right? So that's coming from Cong Congresswoman Grace Means, um, website now I want y'all to hear this now and this is what's funny uh, they did a zoom call day before yesterday I believe it was they did a zoom call where they talked about this right and they had um, uh, Jose Garcia Alero Cantillo uh, Grace Ming and, and several others on the zoom call and they ended the Zoom call real quick. From my understanding, they wouldn't take any question and answer. Uh, uh, they certainly wouldn't take any question and answer from uh, anybody that they, uh, th now this is what's being reported. It's, it, allegedly, they wouldn't take any uh, question and answer. They certainly wouldn't take any question and answer from uh, anybody that they perceived as being a uh, 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 black or, or foundation of black American or black American or whatever. And uh, you cannot get into the Zoom call now. Even with the passcode that they have for the Zoom call, you can't get into it. There's a link to the Zoom call. I went into the link. They asked you to register with your name and your email address and all that. I did that, and I used the passcode that was provided, and it says wrong passcode. So they are not making this Zoom call available the, the recording of the Zoom call available to anybody. Why? Because they know that this is a bunch of bullshit and they know that this is an attempt to erase and replace uh, a foundation of black Americans with immigrants, right? 
But I want y'all to listen to just one portion of what people were able to get from the Zoom, okay? And um, this is Representative, I'll say, uh, 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 Jose Garcia talking. So just listen. into action. My father was a Marcelo, and people like him helped build this country. And immigrants continue to move our country forward. I came to Chicago in the mid-60s. I know the fear and the hope of being an immigrant, and I'll always be grateful for how... Now, his father helped build this country, but he came to Chicago in the mid-60s. So when did his father get here? Because in the mid-60s, he would have been much, much, much younger. Because this man looks like he might be maybe in his 60s now. He said he came in the mid-60s. Okay, I was born in 1966. I'm 56 years old. I'll be 57 this, years old this year. So how did his father help build this country? Let's keep going. Chicago welcomed me when I arrived. We were fortunate to abide in a community that embraced us, wanted us to succeed, and gave us the resources to do so. But the pathway to citizenship was open to me, uh, is no longer open to many people. The stability afforded to me does not exist. Now listen how he lied, talking about the pathway to citizenship no longer exists. The one he took no longer exists. Now, if you got some 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 honest immigrants, people who have went through the process, people who have gone through the, the process of neutralization and citizenship and all of that, they probably would tell him to his face he lied because the process does exist. And there are people every day that are following the process. No, what y'all want is y'all want folks to just let y'all come on in, cross the border illegally, and then just automatically we make you American citizens. It don't work that way. You don't want to be held accountable. You don't want those who are here illegally. Know that they are here illegally and continue to stay here illegally. You don't want those to be punished. You want everybody to, 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 to act like, oh, 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 we feel so sorry for you. And I, No. We are now living in very different times. Today, millions of immigrants live in uncertainty because of an outdated immigration system. And if new immigrants succeed in navigating our increasingly difficult immigration system, resources to help them get a foothold. Okay. Hold on. I want y'all to... You? Let me go back because I want to name some of the people that are on this Zoom call. Um, Grace Ming is on this Zoom call. Uh, Jose Gerardo Gates is on this Zoom call. This Nicole Malaku chick from the um, National Part Partnership for New Americans is on this call. So these are the six people that I'm seeing on this call. Who is this other chick right here? Hold on. So these are the folks that's on this call. Garcia, Alana Contino, uh, Liz Sweet, she, he, she, her, from the um, MIRA co 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 uh, Coalition or whatever, Grace Ming, um, this Makula, uh, Mal Maluka woman, and that um, Gates dude. Those are the six people that the screen is showing that are on this Zoom call. All between. This is a coincidence. This is intentional. We have one party that villainizes and dehumanizes immigrants, and frankly, we Democrats have not been able to get the job done for our immigrants. So they're talking about one party that 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 that, that villainizes immigrants. They're talking about the, uh, oh here they're talking about the Republican Party. So all of these people that you see. Uh, uh, on the Zoom call and all these folks that you see pushing this thing, talking about New Deal and all of this for new Americans are Democrats. 
right? But you got to remember, it started under a Democratic uh, uh, administration of uh, Barack Obama's administration. He was the one that started this mess. He's the one that set the groundwork for this. And it's just being reintroduced and renamed. So instead of the White House Task Force, what did I say? Obama called it White House Task Force on New Americans. Now they want to call it uh, the National Office of New Americans. Let's keep going. But we as a country are better than this. And of course, I'm hopeful for the future in which immigrants and refugees are fully included in social, economic, and civil fabric of our diverse nation. Now, please tell me how these folks are not included. These folks go where they want to go. They live where they want to live. You understand what I'm saying? They shop where they want to shop. They drive. They do everything that anybody else in America does. They do anything that any native-born American can do, except for vote. And now they're trying to push for them to be able to vote. I'm talking about the illegal ones. I'm not talking about the folks who have gone through the process. You understand what I'm saying? Have, have done whatever they needed to do to go through that process to become an American citizen, to become naturalized and gain their citizenship. But even the illegal ones, the aliens, do whatever, they commit crimes, they do anything that any native-born American does. So what are these people talking about? No, what they want is for the United States government to just let them walk on in like they've been doing, just cross the border, walk on in, and boom, we automatically make you American citizens. They want protective status, which they have, and they want to be able to just come on in here, illegally invade the country, and just take over. The new deal for New Americans Act does just that. It will help build a more welcoming and inclusive society, eliminate roadblocks to citizenship for eligible residents, fund legal programs for language learning and workforce development, and substantially raise refugee resettlement admissions and help all immigrants navigate the legal immigration system. All right, y'all. That's him. And of course, this will be linked down in the description box as well, because this is about all of the Zoom that we were able to get because like I said, they won't let you register to listen to the playback of the Zoom call. Right? Why? Because they know this is a bunch of bullshit. That's why. They know that this is a bunch of bullshit, that this is a lie, and that all of this is is taken from um, history what was meant for the newly freed slaves and making it for immigrants. Now, let me see. Um, let me see what some of the comments was on this because this is on Twitter. So let's see what some of the com comments were. Uh, this is what somebody said, and they and they did not allow black Americans on stage or reading our question and answers. So uh, I've heard a whole lot of people say that doing the Zoom call, that they would not let black folks come up and say anything, um, and that they would, you know, because they opened it up, that they would not let anybody say anything, and that they would, um, and that they wouldn't um, uh, read off any of the black folks question and answers, okay? So um, now let's go over here to this uh, National Partnership for New Americans. Um, and I'll have the, the website linked in the description box about us, our vision, 
NPNA envisions a nation where immigrants, refugees, and all people can achieve their full social and economic potential to thrive in an inclusive and uh, participatory democracy. Uh, NPA exists to advance an immigrant, uh, Im uh, an immigrant equ equity and inclusion agenda at the state, local, and federal level through policy, advocacy, and, se and service programs that create vast opportunities for immigrant and refugee communities to achieve full civic, social, and economic justice. Uh, pillars of impact of uh, democracy building. I don't know what the hell that is supposed to be talking about this democracy thing. Uh, drive federal inclusion policy. Network uh, capacity building. Field leadership, pro-immigrant narratives and communication. Okay, and then it has um, their members, uh, Asian Services in Action, Asian Texas for Justice, uh, Austin Asian Community Civics uh, Coalition, Asian Pacific American Network of Oregon, Asian Pacific, Asian and Pacific uh, Island of American Vote. So, I mean, the Asians are all over this. The Asians are all over this. You got some Chinese folk in here. I mean, the Asians are all over this right here. So if for anybody wondering, like I said, for all you black folks running around here talking about this minority coalition and, and that Asians or or, 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 or or Hispanics or any of these folks can be allies for us, no. The Asian community is all over this. North Carolina Asian Americans together. And I live in North Carolina. So the, the, the Asians are all, all, all over this, all over the place. You even got an African thing, Bitingo for Africa. You even got Africans in, uh, involved in this. These are their partners. These are the people that have partnered with them. You understand what I'm saying? For this new Americans uh, uh, thing. Then it's got their board of directors. And they got Indians on this board of directors. They got Indians. They got Hispanics. Um, they got one black chick. She looked like she about black, but she looked like she might be um, um, Petra Falcon. She looked like she might be Native American. Um, this is their board of directors. And then they got the staff. This Nicole, this this Nicole Mal, uh, Maluku, she's the uh, director, uh, executive director. Nancy Flores, deputy director. Sarah Messick, director of programs. So yeah, I'll leave this um. Of course, this will be in the, in the description box as well. Then it goes to uh, um, programs, NP, uh, uh, National Partnership of New Americans Family Protection Network. The National Partnership for New Americans Family Protection Network is the largest immigrant rights legal, immigrant rights legal service network in the country built of 35 member organizations across 37 states with a combined legal staff of 150 attorneys and Department of Justice accredited representatives that serve over 320 immigrants and refugees each year. So the Department of Justice is back in this. Uh, cities and Countries for Citizenship. That's one of their programs. Uh, English as a Gateway. 
English as a Gateway is a national model and, stra and strategy to expand English language acquisition in the United States with MP NA members who are leading immigrant rights coalitions across the country through policy and, pro and, and programmatic and yeah efforts. The New American Youth Leadership Council. The New American Youth Leadership Council is an, is an initiative launched in 2021 in partnership with MPNA members with aims to expand youth leadership development to grow and sustain the field to advance full inclusion and integration of immigrants, refugees, and all marginalized communities. Climate Justice collaborative so uh, that's just uh, uh, just a little bit of what's on this NPNA um, website and I thought they would have the zoom call on here but they're not making this zoom call available to anybody why because they don't want us to really know what they are talking about they don't mean for us to know what's really going on when I say us I'm talking about black Americans especially foundational black Americans native black Americans native born uh, 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 black citizens they don't want you to know what's going on that's the reason why they will not give you access to that Zoom call. But um, this is the last thing that I got here for y'all. And I'm going to have a link to this uh, YouTube channel because it's going to be, because uh, uh, I would urge we all need to keep our eyes on this, this YouTube channel because this YouTube channel keeps us informed about what's going on and the name of this youtube channel is u.s immigration news that's the name of this youtube channel u.s immigration news i gotta get off here because i gotta i got something i got to go do so let me hurry up um but in this particular and, and like i said you have the the um the link to this this youtube channel uh in the description box it says U.S. Immigration Good News, New Deal for New Americans Act, White House, right? And I just want y'all to listen to it. We're not going to listen to the whole thing because I, I, I got to move on. But I just want y'all to listen to just a little bit of this. cut the check and she said what check the same Elizabeth Warren that's running around talking about she's a five dollar Indian that same Elizabeth Warren is also supporting this new deal for new Americans act okay see that's not something that anybody else is saying but this immigration, this U.S. immigration news is putting her out there, putting Elizabeth Warren out on Front Street that she's also supporting this. What it reads is, now this is what she just, this is what she going to say, but this is what it reads. Senator Edward J. Mackey and Elizabeth Warren, along with Representative Grace Ming, have introduced the New Deal for New Americans Act 
a comprehensive piece of legis legis legislation that seeks to promote the inclusion and integration of immigrants and uh, refugees into American society. Now, because she didn't, because this woman uh, 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 reading this stuff on this video is an Indian, yeah, she's an immigrant too, um, they actually have the words up on the screen so you can read what she's saying. So if you go back to this video, if you can't quite understand what it's saying here, it, it, when you hit the link in the description box, it, even if you can't understand exactly what she's saying, the words are on the video. So let's just listen to a little bit more. Jump into the video. Senators Edward J. Markey and Elizabeth Warren, along with Representative Grace Mann, have introduced a new deal for New Americans Act, a comprehensive piece of legislation that seeks to promote the inclusion and integration of immigrants and refugees into American society. The bill recognizes the many challenges that immigrants face from language barriers to employment hurdles and access to legal services and seeks to address them through various initiatives and programs. The New Deal for New Americans Act proposes to establish a national office of New Americans within the White House, which would serve as a central hub for promoting immigrant and refugee inclusion and coordinating efforts between federal, state, and local governments. The office would work to provide resources and support immigrants and refugees in you heard what she said the office would work to provide resources and support resources is the key word when these folks talk about resources they're talking about money tangibles like I said they're not talking about symbolism they're not talking about the first Indian or the first Mexican this or the first uh, 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 immigrant this. No, they're talking about resources, money. Integrate into their communities and access widely services such as English language classes and workforce development training. The bill would also reduce barriers to naturalization by establishing a flight application fee, amending the English and civics exam requirements for older individuals and exempting eligible U.S. high school graduates from taking the naturalization exams. This would help make the naturalization process more accessible and affordable for millions of immigrants who are seeking to become citizens and fully participate in American civic life. In addition, the New Deal for New Americans Act would protect fee waivers and expand reduced fee applications for immigration benefits. It would also establish grant programs for community-based organizations and other entities that offer legal services for those applying for immigration relief, English classes and workforce development training. These initiatives would provide vital support to immigrants and refugees who often face significant challenges in accessing legal services and education and training opportunities. So th that's about all the video that, that, that I'm going to play for here. And um, all of this is a part of copyright because I'm just doing this for education and for commentary. So all of this is a part of uh, uh, the Copyright Act. But um, like I said, I'll have this, this video listed down in the description box and we need to pay attention to this U.S. immigration news. Because uh, let me tell you some of the other videos that Hello, they have everyone. posted. Welcome back. Uh, they got videos posted such as U.S. Um, U.S. Immigration News, Green Card, uh, Breaking Immigration Good News, uh, Big News, No in uh, No Interview, U.S. Visas, uh, Big Delay in Green uh, Green Card. I, I mean, they just got all kinds of videos on here talking about immigration and talking about what's going on. So I would suggest that we all, you know, uh, 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 periodically go and check what's, uh, what's being reported on this uh, YouTube channel, right? So um, it, 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 it might even do for us to subscribe to this YouTube channel so that we can receive notifications when they post so we can keep up 
in, in that way with some of the stuff that even the, the mainstream media is not reporting on. Because I'm sure they're telling us stuff here that even the mainstream media isn't reporting on. Okay? So, um, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead on and subscribe. Yeah, I went on head on and subscribe. So that's it. Uh, uh, that's it for this video. I just wanted um, to bring y'all this information. Like I said, we need to put this on the jump summer jam screen. Uh, putting it on the summer jam screen just just basically means you put it out there so that everybody knows what's going on. You inform everybody of what's going on. But that's what this. Um, Come on now. That's what this uh, S433, that's, that, that's, the, that's the title of it. That's the number of it in the Senate. New Deal for New Americans Act of 2021. And you need to understand how this impacts us as, uh, as black Americans and especially foundational black Americans, how this impacts us specifically, how this targets us directly, and how they take from what the Freedmen's Bureau was supposed to mean to us, and now they take that, retwist it, rewind it, reword it, and make it about immigrants. So I would suggest that everybody talk about this. Please, please, please share this video, like this video, please have this conversation with your family, your friends, or uh, uh, with anybody that'll listen, and, and, and please stay up on this. Get down in that description box. Click these links. Read this act. Get on that channel and watch some of those videos about immigration. The whole nine yards. So that you can understand what's really going on. And so you can understand how they have been undermining us from the very beginning. And like I said, take notice that while we running around here, you know, can't get together, can't codify, can't decide what we're going to do with all this state mess and, and, and all of this about reparations, these people are going straight to the government. And there is no black politician going straight to the government in the form of introducing any kind of bill or any kind of act to do anything specifically for foundational black Americans. But this is something that's being done specifically for a group, a specific group of people, immigrants and refugees. So see, that's the reason why we got to get rid of the CBC. You understand what I'm saying? If we're going to do any voting at all, we need to do voting in these uh, 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 in, uh, in, in, in state and local elections. We don't need to be doing any voting in, in, in national uh, uh, until we start voting some of these folks out on the, on the state and the local level. Especially these black politicians that are supposed that they got there based on our votes, but once they get there, it ain't, they ain't interested in doing nothing for us. Nothing for us. But these immigrants have formed their coalition against us. And you gotta understand this bill was first introduced 2024, 2021. So this bill is over two years old. That's when it was first reintroduced. But this started under Obama. I want to remind y'all of this again. This started under the, under the Obama administration. White House Task Force on New Americans. So, you know, y'all please make sure 
you share this. Make sure you have these conversations on and off social media. Make sure you get down in that description box. Click on these links. Read about this bill. Make sure that you go to that uh, YouTube channel and listen to that video. Listen to the other videos that they have where they're talking about the different things that's going on as far as immigration is concerned. Like I said, because I'm sure we're going we're gonna to hear a whole lot more about immigration on that YouTube channel than we'll ever get from mainstream media. Like always, all the information about the channel, uh, 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 the cash app, the, 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 the email, all of that information about the channel is also in the description box. But this is what I want to bring y'all today. Again, I want y'all to make sure that you keep your power tools at the ready because um, there are folks uh, 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 from the dominant society that are posting all kinds of videos and all kinds of stuff on YouTube. They're trying to rile up these, 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 these the, 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 the Mayo Brigade, as I call them, the Mayo Brigade. They're trying to rile them up and all of that. Uh, so, you know, and, and so there might be an uptick in violence against found uh, against black folk, against uh, black Americans or whatever. So, you know, uh, uh, stay on your P's and Q's. Keep your head on the swivel. Um, keep your power tools at the ready. Uh, stay smart. Be safe. But most importantly, be on code and stay on code. Okay? All right. That was the video for today. And I will talk to you guys later.